Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that. <laughs> That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Win. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. Let's wake up the football gods this morning. It is Monday and you know, I love Mondays. I know it sounds crazy to say that you love Mondays, but here we are. Oh, I need to turn on my clock. Shoot. Here we are. It's Monday. It's the beginning of the week. We are a step closer to the NFL season. We are a step closer to the beginning of the NFL season. Guys, ladies, kitties, one month from today, the Dallas Cowboys report to Oxnard. That's right. The season is upon us. And of course, we are still in that silly season right now of time where, you know, they're, they're reaching and grabbing and trying to get, you know, something to talk about because they want to keep your interest in things. They want the clicks. They want the views. But this is really the dead time. Now, I do have something special. I will be doing a premiere <clears throat> Later on today, I did an interview late yesterday evening, and it ended up by the time I got it edited and things, um, it, it was kind of late. So I'm going to premiere it this afternoon, um, maybe about four o'clock or so. We'll definitely go through it. It's something you definitely want to see. I think you will enjoy it. You'll get some more insight and background on one of our players. I think it's going to actually be really, really good. So look for that uh, sometime today. I'll, I'll do it as a premiere. I'll set it up and get it there so you guys can see it. Anyway, it's funny, a couple of things. Right now, what you're seeing is you're seeing the blowing up of Mike McCarthy versus um, Jerry Jones. And you are literally getting the perspective that, you know, Mike McCarthy is like ready to go to blows with Jerry Jones, you know, that it's, it's just bad. And you're seeing it in all these different publications and everything else. Now, let me go to where all this actually started from. Okay. And I'm not sure it's, you know, I'm sure like any relationship, like any relationship that you have, or any job. I mean, I know when I used to work for other people and stuff, I'd get flustered. You know, I'd get fed up with the job. And, you know, just shit happens. You go through good times and bad. But be that as it may, when we look at this, this article came out uh, by Jordan Stringer, okay? This came out on June 22nd. This came out on Saturday. And it's been like a slow burn Till now it's an inferno. And when I read this, it's kind of like, I'm not sure that, that there's no particular incidents. There's nobody quoting Mike McCarthy. There's nothing that Mike McCarthy said. There's not a press conference where you look and, you know, he seems to be flustered about everything that's out there. This is basically an assumption. They're assuming that he's getting, because listen to how this goes. Dallas Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy is entering the final year of his contract on the hot seat. Now, let me ask you, what year has Mike McCarthy not been on the hot seat? Every year, every year, every year, the beginning of the year, we hear if the Cowboys don't make a deep run, Mike McCarthy will get fired. We hear this every offseason. Yes, we, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Mike McCarthy's job status was a major headline after the Cowboys were upset at home by the Green Bay Packers. It wasn't a major headline when they lost twice to San Francisco? It wasn't? Oh, okay. i just checking, asking for a friend. There were rumors the Cowboys could fire McCarthy and try to hire former New England. See, here's the key parts of this. The Cowboys could fire. Well, they could, and they could not. I mean, you know, that's like they could say, you know, they could fire Mike McCarthy 
And they could try and hire Mark Holmes. You insert any name there. They could try. It's not that we've heard that the Cowboys are going to fire him, or you know, we've been told the Cowboys will fire him, and that they're going to hire. Okay. Again, all this is assumptions. In fact, many think. Oh, here we go. Many think. Okay. Belichick has a chance to take over the job in 2025. See, all of this stuff leaves possible deniability to the situation. However, the Cowboys have decided to let Mike McCarthy ride out the 24 season to prove his worth for a new contract. The team currently has McCarthy, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, and Micah Parsons heading into the all-in season on the last year of their contracts. Hmm. McCarthy's contract situation can affect the Cowboys' locker room. Again, it can affect. Will it affect? I don't know. I seem to think that Dak Prescott really likes Mike McCarthy since the coaching that he did last year got that offense to get him in the MVP conversation. I got to think that C.D. Lamb looks at this offense and says, you know what, it's put me into a position where I can be the highest paid non-quarterback in football right now in this contract situation. I got to believe that Ferguson, definitely taking a big step up, really likes working with Mike McCarthy. I don't see where there's an animosity and everybody bypassing Mike McCarthy to go to Jerry Jones. I, I don't see that. Now, maybe Micah does. I don't know. But this, again, it seems like they're trying to make something that may not be there. Um, Tyler Dude with Go Long. Go go Long. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I've never heard of Go Long. Who the heck is Tyler Dune with Go Long? Are they Cowboys insiders? Do, do they work for the Dallas Cowboys? Is this family members of Mike Mc... Who are these people that are telling you this? Talk to several sources who think the Cowboys are making a mistake by letting McCarthy coach on the last year of his contract. So wait a minute. He's talked to several sources who think that the Cowboys are making a mistake. This is not Mike McCarthy. This is not the Joneses. This is not the assistant coaches that are saying, boom, point blank. Who think? I can think all kinds of things. Doesn't mean it's true. At least give him a one-year extension, says Cowboys personnel man, former Cowboys personnel man. Uh, we can all agree that you don't want a coach to go in as a lame duck or a player going into it, but that's the Cowboys way. Jason Garrett played on the last year of two deals, two deals. Dak Prescott, franchise tagged twice. D-Law, franchise tagged once, almost tagged a second time, and he basically said, F you, release me. Dalton Schultz, franchise tag. Zeke Elliott had to hold out. This is the Cowboys' way. And you know this. You can't be surprised of how the Cowboys do business. You can't say that this has been an unknown. Okay. Cowboys are undermining Mike McCarthy. Multiple people high up in the organization indicate that current players are more concerned about Jerry Jones than their head coach. They know ownership can undermine the head coach at any moment. Okay? We, we all know that. We all know that. So that means you can get a talented team like they've had, the personnel source, but they're going to underachieve when the coaches can't influence the players the way they need to. One would imagine a coach would like being put in a loose would not like, want to be put in a losing situation McCarthy has to get his players to buy into the program to succeed and keep his job but the players aren't buying in because it's not McCarthy's show I'm not sure that when I look at the Cowboys situation and I hear about the Eagles right now with Jalen Hurts not backing his coach I'm not sure that we have that same dynamic. And I'm not sure when you look at how many teams didn't win 12 games last year or the year before the year before that the team has necessarily really been undermined. Because the last I checked, there was only one team that ended up with the Super Bowl last year. Only one. 
the Eagles, who were thought to be a Super Bowl favorite, they crashed and burned. They lost the same weekend. They got blown out by Tampa Bay 38-9. to With the talented roster that they had and everything seemingly going for them. Great offensive line, great wide receiver duo, great quarterback, and so forth. Incredible draft class and Jordan Davis and the Kobe Dean. And somehow, they failed. But that's okay. Okay. So, it's hard. I feel bad for Dak. I think Dak really is a really good quarterback who is capable of taking a team to the Super Bowl. He has to overcome a lot of things. So, when you go through this whole article... There's no meat on the bones. It's, it's, it's great because we're all talking about it. I've had a couple of videos trying to explain my point of view of it. But I don't see in here where you actually see Mike McCarthy seen in his office mad. Mike McCarthy throwing shit in his office. Or Mike McCarthy snippet, you know, with Jerry Jones. This is all people are assuming and now everybody is running with it. That's my, my, my whole take with this. So as I come through here, I, I, I get up here and I spend about an hour going through the news and the clips and everything else to try and put everything together. See, I, I like to think of myself as a Dallas Cowboys digester or garbage disposal. You know, I go through it, grind it all up, and then we'll see what comes out of it. And it's funny because I started thinking about, as we're talking about paying quarterbacks, it was crazy to me, it was crazy to me um, nothing against Trevor Lawrence. Nothing against Trevor Lawrence. But Trevor Lawrence's autograph signings started out at $275. Now, I didn't say he was showed up late. They were like, oh, he's going to be half an hour late. It's like, you know what? I got mine. I don't feel like waiting around to see how many people are there. But I only saw one person with Jaguar skin. He just gets the second highest contract or is paid the tide for the highest amount per year. And his autograph signing is 275 starting up, depending on what you got. It's, it's a small flat, small picture, it's 275. Something a little bigger, it's $300. And I'm sitting here thinking, that's what Emmett Smith's cost is. Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith is the same as Trevor Lawrence. The playmaker, buck fifty. Charles Haley, 80 bucks. And you're going to tell me that I can get Michael Irvins and Charles Haley for less than Trevor Lawrence? It's insane. So I started going back a little bit, and I came across this little gym. Because as we're sitting here talking about paying quarterbacks, Colin Cowherd, I hope that this doesn't get copyrighted, but I'm just going to play the audio. Because this was right after Deshaun Watson got paid with the Texans and they were going through and they were talking about, you know, quarterbacks that needed to get paid and whether or not they should get paid. Now I want to remind people that Deshaun Watson signed the biggest fully guaranteed contract in the history of football. It was an outlier. Now granted it's averaging 45 million a year. I believe it is. They restructured it for the first two years. One, because he wasn't playing that whole year, and the second year they needed to. But his contract, as we talk about Dak Prescott's hit being 55, now a couple of years from now it won't seem as bad, is $63 million this year, fully guaranteed. It's $63 million next year, fully guaranteed. It's $63 million fully guaranteed the following year. But I don't hear any outcry about Deshaun Watson. Listen to this. Deshaun Watson signs a four-year, $160 million extension with the Houston Texans. We now have multiple teams in the NFL. L.A. Rams mm -hmm. with Jared Goff, Kansas City with Mahomes, Philadelphia with Carson Wentz, and Houston with Deshaun Watson, who have paid their star quarterbacks early. Mm -hmm. And in two cases, Deshaun Watson and Carson Wentz, we've got major injury history with both. Mm -hmm. And yet Dak is franchise tag. This is the deal mostly that Dak wanted. What is really interesting about Dak and Deshaun Watson. Now, really? obviously, Dak's been in the league longer than Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Deshaun was a higher draft pick than Dak Prescott. But let's take the last two years. So they've both had some years in the league. 
What is shocking is how similar they are. Deshaun's won a few more games. They both have 52 touchdowns and around 20 picks. They both complete about 66, 67 percent of their throws. And one's passer rating is 100 and another is 98.4. It's the same guy. There's a big difference, though. Deshaun Watson's done that despite his surroundings. Mm, okay. Dak despite. has accomplished that because uh-huh. of his surroundings. Okay. Okay. This is why I never bought into all the Dallas reporters mm-hmm. claiming that Dak was going to get big money. He has had a top two offensive line since he entered the league, a top one or two running back, a top three or four receiving core. His head coach always been an offensive guy. And as much as we roll our eyes at Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, they generally draft pretty well and have elite players my entire life. Dak and Deshaun's numbers are shockingly similar the last two years. One guy got there despite his surroundings in Houston. Another got there because of his surroundings in Dallas. Maybe it says Jerry Jones and the Cowboys are much better run than we think. But this, this, is, this is specifically why if I give you Mercedes, I want Mercedes results. If I give you a top two offensive line for three or four years, if I give you a top two running back for four years, if I give okay. you all sorts of candy and fun on the perimeter, You know, if I give you offensive coach after offensive coach, you got to do better than one playoff win. I mean, it's so funny to watch people bang on Jared Goff. Jared Goff got to a Super Bowl and had a chance to win it in the fourth quarter. It's like people that bang on Jimmy Garoppolo. For three quarters, he outplayed Patrick Mahomes. He's pretty good. Dak still has all these, oh, man. That's why I always say about life. If you told me at 30 years old you're a millionaire, Mm-hmm. But you were a trust fund millionaire. Not that impressive. If you're like, yeah, I'm a child of divorce. I went through a lot. I had to pay for my own college. And you're a millionaire at 30? Now, that's something we're talking about. You may be a uniquely driven individual. Good for you. But what you're surrounded by matters. Josh Allen for Buffalo is a nice quarterback talent. But he's wild. If he didn't have a coach as good as Sean McDermott, hmm. he'd be a mess. Wait for this. Sam Darnold, I think, has much more talent. <laughs> and I'd love to have Darnold over Josh Allen. He was a much better college player. And coming out of the draft, he was higher rated. <laughs> the general manager, the first guy that Ooh, ran the boy. Jets. I mean, the, Adam Gates can't get along with any of his star players. And the first general manager was virtually incompetent. So uh, good for wow. John Watson. I think he deserves every penny of it. And, and by the way, I think the franchise tag is great for Dak. If he pops this year, boom, Pam. I got no problem with it. But I was a huge advocate of franchise tagging Dak. The stuff around him offensively is unbelievably good. It's very rare. I mean, look what Joe Burrow has this year to deal with. We got to be fair with Joe Burrow. He's going to get the you know what kicked out of him. Joe Burrow's got one nice receiver and an old, he's got one old veteran, often beat up wide receiver and a good running back. In that division, that is five wins max. Probably four. 2020? Yeah, wait a minute. 2020. Wait a minute, how did the Bengals do? Was that... uh, 2020, four and 11. Yeah. And the next year was when they went to the Super Bowl. Okay. So the question now, the the reason I play that is because they looked at it and said, Deshaun Watson, incredible quarterback, you know, deserved to get paid. You know, he didn't have the talent and things around him that Dak Prescott had. Well, now we know that the Cowboys end up getting rid of their talent and, you know, letting go of Mari Cooper and things like that. And don't go out and try and replace them like the Eagles did with, you know, A.J. Brown and things. They believe in drafting and that's the way you build the team. 
And you don't look at the Cowboys' offensive line, especially now that we have two rookies that are going to be starting, and say, ah, best offensive or number top two offensive line. We don't have that. You don't look and say that we got a great running back anymore. We've got Zeke coming back, who is in the tail end of his career. You can't look at Tony Pollard last year and say that that was a great season. So all of those misnomers that we said that everything that Dak had, he doesn't have. But you look at two of the last three years, he's had 36 or more TD passes and has been in the conversation for MVP. Deshaun Watson, not so much. But there's no outcry about $63 million hit for the Cleveland Browns the next three years. But then again, he's not the Dallas Cowboys. And so we now have the whole quarterback market that is being reset. And we're getting a little long in the tooth on this broadcast. But Damian Woody, of course, two-time Super Bowl champion with uh, the Patriots, has a little conversation about the whole deal. About Tua, does he deserve to get paid the $60 million? Who, who deserves to get that $60 million? Extension. Lore is, I mean, to Lore. It's small. This is, uh, <laughs> this is, this is this, like, like, this is, I think, the most, it, it, it's probably one of the more complicated contract situations that I can that I can think of in quite some time. Because remember coming into 2023, what was the whole conversation? His durability, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to go out there and play 17 games. What did he do? He go out there and play 17 games. So the conversation, like, I always say you got to be careful paying really good quarterbacks, franchise quarterback money, because you're tied to those guys. And so with Tua, we saw that Trevor Lawrence got paid. Okay, everyone else has gotten paid except for Tua Tungvaluwa, and so it, I would say this: Mike, it, I think this whole thing is depending on Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel thinks that this guy is a guy to lead us, that can lead the Miami Dolphins to the promised land. To pay the man, because what more can Tua do to really show you that he deserves to get paid? He's put up great numbers. Look mm-hmm. at his numbers. His numbers with Mike McDaniel has been just otherworldly. He showed last year that, you know what, I can play 17 games unless you want to see him do it again. That's the only question I have as far as what's holding up, you know, the negotiation as far as getting getting this guy signed to a new contract. We're talking with Damian Woody, ESPN NFL analyst here on Unsportsmanlike, presented by Progressive Insurance, along with Michelle Smallman, Evan Cohen with you, CC Off, back with us next week. You just brought up something that triggered a thought. What is, what is the role triggered of the thought. general manager as it relates to paying quarterbacks? Is it to pay for the job they've done and the job that they think they can do or to only pay guys you could see winning a Super Bowl? Because I can't see Tua winning a Super Bowl, personally. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, as a general manager, you got to be able to manage. you got to be able to manage the cap and build the team. A lot of it has to – when you pay the quarterback – See, this is where your this is where your your front office, the scouting department, and your coaching staff got to really be on it because you got to be able to develop players. See, that's the beauty of what the Kansas City Chiefs have done, right? The Kansas City Chiefs think about this: you pay Patrick Mahomes, obviously you got Travis Kelsey, but what also did the Kansas City Chiefs have done? They developed, particularly on the defensive side of the football, they had the youngest unit in the in the National Football League for two years, and all they've done is mm-hmm. have one of the best defenses in the National Football League and gone back to back winning two Super Bowls in consecutive years. That's what you got that's what you have to do in this salary cap era when you're paying a quarterback a, bo- a boatload of money. You gotta be able to identify talent and develop that talent um in order for you to fill out your roster. And that that's what you know, that's what they gotta do down in Miami. If you're gonna pay to it, you gotta make sure you put the piece around him and develop those guys. Damian, let's stick with quarterbacks here for a second. I was reading over the weekend about Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns saying that he's ahead of schedule in his rehab from that season-ending shoulder surgery that he had last season. Where are you at when it comes to confidence that we will ever see the Deshaun Watson that the Cleveland Browns paid him to be? Um, well, first of all, that's scary. <laughs> um, when, you, when you still hear, here we are, we're about a, a month out from training camp. And they're talking about, you know, still talking about the shoulder, the shoulder situation. Uh, so that would make me very nervous, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, we haven't seen high-level football from Deshaun Watson since 2020. Oh. Think about that. Mm-hmm. When he since got paid. 2020, okay. I believe, was the last time that we saw high-level football from Deshaun Watson. That's like an eon ago. Um, so yep. for me, 
I'm very skeptical that we will see that type of high level uh, quarterbacking from Deshaun Watson. But listen, when you're paying that type of money, that 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 fully guaranteed contract, they're hoping and praying Cleveland that they can pull something something remotely close to that. Damian, let's finish with this. If I told you right now you could sign one of these two players, only one of them, to a five-year, $300 million deal with $220 million guaranteed, and your choices were either Dak Prescott or Jordan Love, who would you take? Ooh. Uh, give me Jordan Love. Why? Because I think Jordan Love is more dynamic. I think he's a more dynamic player. And I, listen, I think Dak Prescott is a great player, but the ups. I think Jordan Love has more upside than Dak Prescott. He's younger. I'll give you and that that's what you're. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for what do you think a guy can be moving forward? We might already plateau with. I don't know how much how much better Dak Prescott can be. I know. I know Jordan Love has a lot more runway left in him. So you think Dak Prescott has basically hit his peak already, and you believe that Jordan Love's peak will be higher than anything Dak Prescott has done thus far? Yes. Wow. Very interesting. Damian Woody, great as always. ESPN NFL analyst, two-time Super Bowl champion. Interesting take on that one. Hmm. What happened to Deshaun Watson? Not been good since 2020. Here's rumors that Russell Wilson may not be the starter in, in with the Steelers, although we have seen that Dak Prescott might be the long-term solution for the Steelers. My point in this is when we look at where they were, we, we were literally listening at 2020 that Sam Darnold is a better prospect than Josh Allen. Dak Prescott, eh, it's a good thing they franchise tagged him because, you know, you're paying guys. And, and so you start looking at this and saying, you know, as Dak Prescott – is getting a second contract, second mega contract. There's a reason why he's going to. It's because he's played really, really good. He's played really, really good. And that's why you pay the guy. There's not many guys in the planet that are playing anywhere near that. But then again, you know, I will get the hate. I'll get the emails, how much I'm an idiot and a Dak lover and all of these things that really are pretty sick from some of you people out there who, because you have a different opinion than I do, feel the need to denigrate me. But hey, you keep doing you. You keep watching because you keep helping our numbers grow. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you. Peace out. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe